Today I'm going to talk about sugary drink taxes and the potential for these taxes to improve health outcomes. So you might be aware that unhealthy diet is a major cause of early death in the U.S., accounting for one in five deaths in this country. And one dietary area that we've focused on as researchers and policymakers over the last decade or so is sugary drink consumption. On any given day, more than half of adults and children consume sugary drinks. And we know from research that overconsumption of these drinks contributes to some of the most important health problems in this country, including obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. So it's perhaps no surprise that policymakers have sought policy solutions to addressing consumption of sugary drinks. And one policy that's become increasingly popular in recent years is sugary drink taxes. Today, more than 50 countries have sugary drink taxes, and here in the US, seven different cities have these taxes. I'm gonna to focus today specifically on telling you about the tax that Philadelphia has implemented. Philadelphia is the largest US city with a beverage tax, and the sixth largest city overall. So it's important for us to understand the effects of the beverage tax in this environment. Philadelphia implemented a beverage tax in January 2017, their tax applies to both sugar and non-calorically sweetened beverages, that is to both regular and diet drinks. A next important question is how do consumers respond to these price increases? How much do we change our behavior as the price of these sugary drinks increases? We have a number of studies examining this question as well. The largest of these studies examines sales of beverages in Philadelphia and compare those sales to sales in other cities without beverage taxes. What these studies find is that the implementation of the Philadelphia beverage tax resulted in a reduction in sales of tax beverages in Philadelphia of about 22 to as high as 38%, depending on the study. This is a substantial reduction in sales of these beverages, much larger than we see from interventions like educational campaigns, so it's a substantial effect. You might be wondering, if consumers buy fewer sweetened beverages after the tax, what do they buy instead, if anything? We also now have a handful of studies examining this question. What those studies find is that consumers are not substituting from these sweetened drinks to sweet foods, like cookies or other desserts. They're also not substantially increasing their purchases of non-tax beverages, like milk, 100% juice, and water. We are seeing some increases in purchases of beverage concentrates. These are powders and syrups that consumers make into beverages at home. And that suggests that policymakers might want to consider whether these beverage concentrates could be taxed in the future, because we don't necessarily want to encourage consumers to buy those products. You might wonder where the revenue from the beverage tax is allocated. Well, in the most recent fiscal year, 2020 to 2021, the beverage tax raised about $77 million in revenue. As part of the campaign to pass the beverage tax, the city committed to allocating a large portion of that revenue towards funding universal pre-K. And this increased the popularity of the tax, the policy support for the tax we see in the city. And in fact, a large share of the revenues have been allocated to early childhood development. About $51 million in fiscal year 2020-21 was put towards early childhood development and specifically towards funding universal pre-K in the city. Other allocations included significant funding for community infrastructure projects like improving parks and recreation centers, economic development programs like job training and GED classes, and about $2 million to increase access to healthy foods, for example, through the Meals on Wheels program and to food banks. There are still a number of questions that researchers have about the long-term impacts of beverage taxes in Philadelphia and in the US and across the globe. But the evidence to date indicates that these beverage taxes lead to significant reductions in purchases and consumption of sweetened drinks, and we think that would be likely to improve health outcomes. Moreover, these taxes raise significant revenue that the government can use to fund important health and social programs in ways that could benefit our health over a longer time horizon. And that way, beverage taxes represent a win-win of a policy. They're improving the health of consumers and they're generating much needed revenue to fund important programs.